Hello, sewing friends. I'm Katrina Walker, and I know you're watching from all over our beautiful world, so, you know, just hello to you. That's always very exciting. And I'm super excited about our topic today. So our topic today is how to convert from a darted pattern into a princessing pattern. Now, of course, my dear friends at National Sewing Circle, they have, of course, step-by-step -step illustrated, illustrated instructions from yours truly available to you for by download. And the little, little code, the QR codes up on the screen there. And so don't worry if you if, if maybe it didn't make sense or you need instructions, those are available for you to download for today's lessons. So anyhow, so you know, sometimes you just feel like a princess. Well, where I use this a lot, and maybe you will too, is sometimes you have fabric, maybe you're into exotic textiles. Um, I'm a big fan of kimono, um, both recycled kimono bolts and or kimono fabrics and then also kimono bolts. Well, they're only so wide, right? And I'm wider than that. So <laughs> I can't cut a whole front or a side, half of a front from just one because, you know, I'm larger than that. But I can if it's a princess seam. But sometimes you have those, those jackets or shirts that you really like that are happen to be darted. Like the blouse I'm wearing has up to 12 different darts to fit it. And that's awesome. I love the way it fits. I love the way it feels. And I, that's why I teach this blouse class. But sometimes you want a princess, right? Well, of course, I could go and just buy another princess pattern and I could fit that and do all that stuff. Sure. But sometimes you just want to use the pattern you already love, right? So that's what this is all about. So when you're thinking, you know, why would I use this really, um, Sometimes it's a style thing, but really it's much more, maybe you want to do some color blocking, or maybe you have, again, you have fabric that is narrower, and you've got to figure out a way to squeeze it in, and so this can make it easier. So again, the this is basic pattern skills, so pattern making, so learning flat pattern. And so what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be rotating a dart, we're going to be moving it, so it's really some fun stuff, but... I just I would encourage all of you to to learn some basic pattern making because that I, I do think that you know in my personal training taking pattern making really was the thing that elevated my sewing skills from just I'm an excellent seamstress to you know being able to really open up and create the things you want to create so that's super important and um, I just I want that for all of you I want you all to sew what it is that you love. So let's get to the lesson, right? I could talk about how excited I am all day, but let's not do that. That's boring. Let's get to work. That's exciting. Okay. So here I have a little imaginary pattern. I recognize this is not real exciting, but it's a basic, basic shape of the front pattern for a garment. For some reason it seems kind of wide to me, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Now, this is assuming, it's assuming that this pattern does fit you. Now, obviously this would be a tiny person that this imaginary person would, would fit, but you're working with a pattern you've already altered for fit. And um, questions asked, um, thank you all. You know, definitely ask those questions as they come up and I'll, I'll see them. And um, Esther from the Netherlands is asking, can you use this method in a men's shirt? Um, to dress. Yes, you can use this for any pattern, any pattern. So I'm super excited you're watching Esther because hopefully, and I'll try not to talk so darn fast, <laughs> but hopefully this will be very helpful. All right, so now this is a pattern for um, a prominent, but more prominent bust than say a men's sh shirt pattern. But here is, um, basically, you need to find the apex. So the first thing we need to do before we can start creating our princess lines is a princess seam. What is truly princess seam always is going to intersect the apex. Now, the apex on the front of the body, the apex is basically the nipple okay, on the front of the body. On the back of the body, the apex is basically the most prominent part of the shoulder blade. Okay, So there is an apex front and back. 
And there is technically an apex, whether it's a design that was shaped for a woman's body or a man's body. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. So an apex is an apex. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is find the apex because my pattern maker didn't mark it on the pattern. Shame on them. Um, I confess I do this on purpose on these so that people have to learn how to do this. But if your pattern has darts but does not have an apex mark, now a lot of commercial patterns will have a little circle with a little, they'll have this kind of mark on there where the apex is located. So, so first thing you want to do is look and see if this mark is on your pattern. If it is, then it makes things slightly faster. Notice I say slightly, not a lot faster, but slightly. If it's not marked on there, then we need to find that. Now, the center of my darts is already marked, but if it wasn't, I'd need to find the center line of any darts. And on a well-drafted pattern, or I should say on a correctly drafted pattern, the darts, the center of each dart should point at the apex. So again, the center of each dart should be pointing at the apex. It does matter where your darts are pointing. If your dart, if you have a garment with a dart that is not pointed at the apex, it will make it look like that high point of your body is actually located somewhere else. I once had a pattern that had uh, neckline darts and they were pointing into the armpit, which I didn't really realize until it was on a dress form. And it made the jacket look very strange on the dress form as if this dress form actually had a bust, a bust line in its armpits. And then I finally realized where the darts were pointing and why it was wrong. And that was a commercial pattern. Okay, so anyhow, so I've drawn up the center line of each dart. And so this is my apex, okay, X marks the spot. There's my apex right there. Again, this is important that I know where my apex is. Um, in pattern making, in pattern making, uh, we draw our darts, when we're working in flat pattern, we actually draw our darts all the way to the apex. Now, this is a pattern that looks more like an actual clothing pattern where the darts have been backed away from the apex. So we don't, we actually sew and wear them like this. But when we're doing pattern making, we actually do draft our darts all the way to the apex. All right, so I'm drawing. So here's my, my apex. Now notice that when I draw my dart lines to my apex, notice that the lines where they meet the stitching line of my garment have not changed. Okay, so this has just been lengthened and I lengthen the dart by aligning my ruler with the leg of the dart. So where the stitching line is, so we're pretending this has no seam allowances. Okay, so this pattern has no seam allowances. So from the seam allowance, you know, where the dart leg meets your seam allowance up to that apex, that's where you draw your line. Okay. So again, stitching line up to the apex. So that's how you redraw your dart lines. And do that with the bust dart. This is called a horizontal bust dart. So again, from my apex over to where the stitching line in my garment seam, where the seam line meets the dart. And these first preliminary steps, by the way, I don't have my hand out in front of me. There's always a chance that I, I did another step first. It's okay if it's slightly different, as long as it's all the right things being done in approximately the correct order. So this is all prep work to get ready for doing our princess alteration. Okay, now I have my, this is my center line, my center line. And again, so for a princess seam, the seam line should intersect the apex. If the seam line is over here, for example, 
that is not truly a princess seamed garment. A princess seamed garment intersects the apex or at least very close to it. So not more than say, you know, maybe a quarter inch, maybe half inch would be pushing it, but you really, it should be intersecting the apex if the garment fits you properly. Okay, so what I need to do next is I need to determine the shape of my princess seam. So this is all just prep work on the darts. This is just prep, preparing the darts, but I need to know what my princess seam is going to look like. I'm gonna to choose to draft this to my shoulder line because again, in this instance, where I usually use this is I'm making, making, cutting basically my front bodice pieces into two parts so that I can squeeze it onto a smaller piece of fabric. That is, that is why I tend to do these. It's not so much that I um, like princess that much better. It's just that I like to work with exotic fabrics that sometimes come in very small pieces. Um, another reason I might choose to do this is because I might choose to do something decorative with my seaming technique. So that gives me another option. Every time you have a seam, whenever you have a seam in a garment, that is a design opportunity. So I want you to internalize. I want you to think about that. Every seam, it's both a design and a fit opportunity. Okay, so that's something for you to think about. All right, so I'm gonna draw my line. So this is my future princess seam. When you put a princess seam into a garment, here's another thing to think about. So a princess seam, so I'm doing, this is called a shoulder princess. Okay, when it goes from the apex up to the shoulder, that is called a shoulder princess. If it goes from the apex over to the arm side or the armhole, that is an armhole princess. All right. The straighter the seam from the apex upward, the less it emphasizes the bust line. So this is another thing to consider when you draft a princess seam. The straighter the seam line is, the less it will emphasize the bust. So if I wanted to emphasize a bust line, say my apex is probably here, I might draft I might draft the princess seam. I want to emphasize the bust. I would draft it over into the armhole, and this accentuates the shape of the bust line. Okay, so just something to understand about princess seams. Uh, some people want to emphasize, some people want to de-emphasize that shape of their body or their client's body, whoever. And so one way you can do that is by deciding how much of a curvature to design into your project. So while we're on this topic, I just want to bring that up. Okay, so back to our drawing. This is relatively easy to do, so I'm kind of trying to drag this out a bit. Okie dokie. So I have what I've done so far. I found my apex mark my apex. I've also extended my darts to the apex. And I've drawn my proposed or my planned princess seam line. In this case, it's a shoulder princess seam. Okay, so that's what I've done so far, in case you were just tuning in. All right, now the dart I don't need is my horizontal bust dart. I don't need that. So I'm going to close that up. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to close this up. And basically when I'm, what I'm doing is I'm doing what's called a dart rotation. I will close this dart and I'll basically, as far as this pattern is concerned, I'm going to rotate it up over into my shoulder dart. Okay, so I've already drawn my, my new line. This would be basically my new dart line in a sense. 
So I can go ahead and close this up. I'm looking for my glue stick <laughs> because I want to use some glue on that. There it is. Glue stick and tape, essential pattern making tools. Okay, so I'm going to cut my dart to the apex and I'm going to close this. Now this is just a practice pattern. Normally on a pattern, this would all line up. So I'll actually just uh, cut that off so it's less distracting, but I just wanted you to understand it. This just because this is a this is a practice pattern. It's not perfect. It's just for play. But I've cut on one dart line so I can close this up. Like I said, I'm just going to chop that up so it doesn't look so disgusting. Okay, so I've closed my dart. Now you see, here's, here's the shape of my imaginary body, see? When I close that dart, it gives a shape. Now if I were to close this dart too, you'd really see the shape. All right, so again, this is why where your dart points, it matters <laughs> because it's going to create that shape wherever it's pointing. Okay. So now what I need to do, so I've closed this dart. Now I wanna transfer it to this line instead. This is like magic. I just, when I was studying pattern making, I just loved playing with the paper dolls and just how that dart just magically transfers from here to here. Now maybe if I wanted a darted garment, leave this darted, I could just go ahead and draft in a dart here and there you go, voila, there's my, there's a shoulder dart instead of a horizontal bust dart. So anytime you have a dart on a pattern, if you don't like where it is, you can put it somewhere else. If you have a horizontal, if you don't have a waist um, dart, for example, or even if you do, if you have a horizontal bust dart, you don't like it, you can just move it over and put it in a waist dart instead. As long as it's still pointed at the apex, you can put that dart wherever you want. So anyway, it's very easy to do. Okay, so the topic today is princess scenes. We're almost there. So here is my shoulder princess, but I'll show you for the back as well. Here's the shoulder princess, and of course here's my... So now I'm just going to cut this dart open. You may have already figured out that's where I'm going with this. Now again, this is for a pattern let me just emphasize, <clears throat> excuse me, this is for a pattern that has already been fitted to your body. Okay, it's actually in many ways easier to fit a darted pattern correctly than a, than a princess pattern. People think it's the other way around, but it's not. <laughs> um, especially if you're, if you're full busted, it's, it's actually easier to alter the darted and then make it princess. Um, so again, this is something that is already fitting you. <clears throat> already fitting you. All right, so here we have, it's a tiny bit of a point right here within about an eighth of an inch. You can round that off just a tiny bit, okay? Just, you don't wanna go more than, I don't know what my pattern making instructors say, maybe it was a quarter of an inch, but it's, it's not much. If you, if, you, if you round this off too much, then you alter the fit. Okay, so you have to be a little bit careful. But really, there we go. So here's my side front piece. Here's my center front piece. Super easy, wasn't that? Super easy. And now I just need to add my seam allowances. And so I'm just gonna tape some seam allowances on there. And bye bye darts, we now have our princess seam. You would add your seam allowances. You do need those, of course. Oops, I didn't quite take that on there, did I? Snip this a bit to get to go around the corners. Okay, okay, there we go. Add my little pattern tissue to give myself a seam allowance. It's like a half scale pattern technically, so we're gonna give it a quarter of an inch. And 
And no, I'm not going to bother with the other side. I think we get the idea. You need to add sea moss. A lot easier to do when you're working full size. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier, honestly, just to tape the tissue on and then trim it to size. Okay, so there would be, I would do the same thing to the other side, and that would be my front, my princess seam front. So don't worry, like I said, this is so quick that I will show it to you again. But let's look at, okay, what if you want to do that to the back? Or the question was asked, you know, again, that, you know, what if what if we want to do this too? It's technically a men's pattern, but we want to make it into a princess pattern for ourselves, or, you know, or they like a princess pattern, we can do it for them too, it doesn't matter. So, um, what do you do? So, sometimes you just have one dart with, to work with. But again, you need to figure out where that apex is. And sometimes that means, pinning the pattern together and actually putting it on your body. Um, again, this is assuming that this pattern fits you, okay, fits the imaginary person. Now with the back of a pattern, again, the apex in the back of your body is basically your, your shoulder blade. So somewhere up in here is basically the broadest point of your shoulder blade or the most prominent point right, that sticks out the most from your shoulder blade. Now, I would say this waist art is probably a little bit closer to center. So probably in a real back pattern, be over a little bit. We're just going to, we're just pretending. But I'm going to say it's about here. So if this had a shoulder dart, it would make it easier because the shoulder dart would likely be pointing, already pointing at that should the uh, shoulder blade, at least it should be. So again, um, that's the apex in the back of your body. If your if your pattern is fitted, it should have it should have oftentimes a shoulder dart that shapes it toward to give you room to move in this area where your shoulder blades are. But then you may not be quite so broad shouldered as to need need that much room in your shoulder. So it just depends on how the person drafts the pattern. But just like with the front, the key here is to find the apex. Find the apex. And then you can draw this line. So this is just how I drew this line. But again, as long as it intersects the apex, you can draw that line pretty much wherever you want, right? So maybe I actually want this to curve a little bit more in back. But if I want it to be used with narrow fabric, <clears throat> my goal is going to be to keep both these pattern pieces as narrow as possible if I'm using specialty fabric. But once again, I'm going to draw, I would, I would technically want to redraw um, these dart lines up to the apex. Do I always do this? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, honestly, I cheat a little bit. Depends on how long that dart is. Um, sometimes, especially in the back, I don't always bother to draw it up all the way. So true confession time. But again, so, okay, I've redrawn my dart lines up to the apex. I've drawn my desired seam line. So now I'm ready just to cut it apart into my separate pattern pieces. And obviously you'd want to trace your pattern off onto some pattern material. Um, there's a lot of different kinds out there. My favorites, um, there's one called Patternies that's just really readily available. It's relatively inexpensive. You can buy it by the bolt even. Pattern ease. There's also, my favorites are actually um, a couple different people sell them. It's really, really thin. It's really thin, it's very see-through. Um, both The Sewing Place and Pamela's Patterns each have their own version of it, but I really like those. 
But on a princess seam, if you take a princess seamed garment and you line up the stitching lines on those garments, you will basically see the guards that are hidden in the seam line. Okay, so that's what's kind of cool about a princess pattern is you can you can actually, you know, if you place those over the line up the stitching lines, you can see the darts that are hidden in the shaping of the of the pattern piece. So again, I would go ahead and add in my seam allowances to each side because obviously this is now a seam line. It's not darts anymore. Okay, but I want to just go over that one more time from the front. For those who might be tuning in late or just need to see it one more time because this is such a relatively quick and easy thing to do, especially when you're just playing around in miniature, right? But this is a really essential skill and knowing how to do these things can really just, again, take your sewing to a whole new level. It just, it means, it's a difference between being a sewist and a designer. Right? A sewist sews stuff together. Okay? They're a sewist. The designer has the ability to look at a basic pattern like this and see a whole world of possibilities that basically any kind of garment I want can be evolved from just this simple pattern. And um, that's why, you know, in your wardrobe, now granted, I don't want to be a hypocrite, I have tons of patterns, but <laughs> the reality is you could get away with just a few basic patterns and then just use pat basic pattern making to do whatever you want. But sometimes it's faster just to let somebody else figure out the pattern making for you. But this is really simple. So, okay, again, if we want to transfer a darted design into a princess design, first thing we need to do is identify the apex. And if it's not marked on your pattern, and your pattern has darts, it sh you should be able to find it by going up the centered line of the dart. You may be thinking, well, what if my dart doesn't have a center line? Okay, well, then you need to figure out you have the point of the dart. You would need to measure, I guarantee these, is, this is not perfect center. But you would need to measure the distance between the darts, find another point, and then draw a line. Okay, just find the center. This one's probably a little bit closer to actual truth. Yeah, that, this one's actually pretty true. Again, this is just a practice pattern. It's not perfect. So I would find this line, find the center, the center between the dart legs, then go to the point of my dart, and draw a line and that would be my center line for my dart and again that center of the dart should be pointing at should be pointing at some raised object some bulge some round spot some high spot on the body okay darts need to point at something protruding or like a waist dart is obviously still pointing to the apex i mean darts do take in extra fabric but it's they have there has to be a larger area if if the person has the same chest measurement and waist measurement, there's no reason to have a dart because it's the same measurement, right? So you can now, if you want the look of a dart, but not don't actually need it for fitting purposes, you can pinch just enough fabric to stitch in a little crease and that doesn't really affect the fit. So you can get the look of a dart without actually affecting the fit by doing that. We call that um, in Palmer Pledge, was who trained me to fit patterns, not to do pattern making, but fit patterns. And we call that essence of darts. Okay, so anyway, so transferring a darted design into princess, we start by finding the apex. Okay, we need to know where that is. Okay. Now, there's two things we need to do next. One is we need to redraft our dart lines to the apex. The other is we need to determine our princess seam line, but I'm gonna go ahead and redraw my, my darts first. So again, in pattern making, when we are working with a block or a sloper, 
um, in the garment industry, we call them blocks. And then sometimes in the sewing world, we call them slopers. But if we're working with a basic pattern block like this, let's say a basic bodice, when we are doing pattern making, we always work with the dart lines going all the way to the apex. And it's only when we make the pattern to actually be sewn that we back off the dart lines like this. And we back the dart lines off for a sewing pattern because it doesn't look good if you sew the darts all the way to the apex. It doesn't look good. You end up with a really pointy spot in a pointy spot. And that is not as a, usually as appealing to the eye as having those darts backed off away from the actual center point. So when we draft these to be sewn, we actually imagine this imaginary circle, imaginary circle around the apex, and we back the dart off to that circle. And there's a certain amount of, that is a, a judgment call. It's kind of an artistic call. Um, depending on the look we want, depending on the fabric, there's various reasons. But at any rate, the pattern making, we need to go all the way to the apex. So we draft this slide two. Right, oops, drew over my fingernail, but that's okay. All right, so I redrafted my darts, but I also need to draw my princess line. Now, here's something for you to contemplate. Again, a princess seam needs to intersect the center front, or it needs to intersect the apex, my apologies. It needs to intersect the apex. But a princess seam, actually, you can even have a princess seam, just to get your imaginations going. Princess seam could even go like this. And we could make a princess seam this way. And it would have this curve, this like semicircle in the front of the garment. Okay, so again, so when it comes to redrawing these dart or seam lines, however we want to use them, we have the ability to, again, as designers, where we place that dart or seam line is purely up to us. That is just something that we decide as a designer that we want to look. But again, in my practical example that I was, I've been using is, you know, I do this so I can squeeze garments out of very narrow pieces of fabric. So I might even want my seam line if I'm really worried about fitting this, fitting this onto a piece of fabric, you know, I may be drawing this line pretty darn straight, pretty straight. And again, the straighter the, the, the seam line from the apex, the less it emphasizes the bust line or the chest curve, however you want to look at it. Okay, so that's something to consider. All right. So now that I've gone ahead and drawn my proposed seam line, I need to go ahead and cancel out this, this bust dart. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to cut on my dart line and close that dart. And again, my side seam is going to look very ugly when I do this, so I will adjust as necessary there. So I've cut my dart line. There's multiple ways to do pattern making. This is just the method that I prefer. It works for my brain. It's very three dimensional. But you can you can buy and find basic blocks like this to work with to learn. Um, get a good pattern making book. There's a lot of different pattern making books out there that are very good. A lot of them are very expensive. I'll warn you right now. But um, if you can get them used, that's good. But get yourself a good pattern making textbook and some imaginary pattern pieces, and they may even come with a textbook. And you can teach yourself flat pattern. Okay, so again, I've, I've closed closed my dart line. Hello, Rosalie. She's tuning in from Long Beach. I'm glad this is making sense. Okay. 
that to me, like when I learned this, this was just so magical. I loved it. Okay, so here again, I've closed the start. You see the little shape of my person. Like I said, I love how three dimensional it is to play with these. So I'm going to, I'm going to now transfer this start and let's rotate it over to the shoulder. And so now to finish my process, very easy. <laughs> now I'm going to cut on my dart lines, my waist dart lines. Oh, and I should mention, if, if I cut, <clears throat> excuse me, the full waist dart up the apex, my morning tea is sticking in my throat this morning. <clears> throat> excuse me. If I go ahead and cut the full dart, it's going to fit exactly as snugly as the garment is has been shaped. If I were to close this up a little bit, make in other words, make the dart smaller and then cut my stitching lines, it would actually give me more waist ease. So there's even more things you can do when you get into this to tweak the pattern a little bit. We're just going to pretend that we want this to stay exactly, exactly the same fit as the original dart. But again, it's easier to adjust the fit on your darted garment. So make sure that the, the garment fits you before you transfer it into a princess. And there we go. There's our transformation once more. So this would be, again, our center front. Be our side front. Of course, we could add our we could add our seam allowances to that because this is now, of course, a seam line, not a dart line. And of course, we would be you know we put all our our markings on this. You know whatever size it is, all that good stuff. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, which I should mention, my pattern making instructor be smacking my hands right about now. Another thing you would have done. Before you cut this open, would be to put your markings on it. You know, you're you're actually your pattern notches. So, forgive me. I just get so excited sometimes. So, we would have put our pattern markings. Now, old school pattern markings. <clears throat> One notch stands for front. Two notches stands for side. So this is side front. Tells you that that's the this. Seam line, the side front seam line. So what I'm doing is I'm just walking that stitching line right back together again. And I could do that on my dart line. Now this pattern doesn't line up perfectly because it's just a practice pattern. It doesn't really sew together. Um, I would have done the same thing here. Just make sure I, I mark some notches. So I know that how my seam lines were going to come apart. All right, so there we go. Now. Just slap my own hand for forgetting to put my notches on, but you would want to notch along that stitch line before you cut it open. Mark your notches. So with the princess um, seam, you may notice sometimes, I'm just going to keep talking, so I have just a little bit more time. Um, with the princess seam, oftentimes they tell you to ease that pattern. Well, I'll tell you, if it's drafted, at least the draft of the way I was taught to draft it, if you match up the stitching lines, now we don't have seam allowances here, so this is the stitching line. If we match up those stitching lines, if the pattern's been drafted correctly, it should be exactly the same. So the reason why sometimes we have to ease is because this pattern, this fabric is on a curve and it can stretch. So in case you're wondering about that, it does happen sometimes that the fabric stretches because it's biased on a curve. And that's why sometimes they tell you to ease it in. But the reality is, is that this actual seam line should be the same length for both pieces. Okay. So again, I just want to remind you that there are instructions for this available for download with the pictures and just the instructions for each, each step along the way. The, the QR code is on your screen that you can pick that, that URL to go get that download um, for your reference. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to watch and take notes at the same time. 
Luckily, this is recorded, so you can watch it again later. But it's nice to be able to know that you have that available for you. So I'm just going to see if there are any questions, but I hope that you've enjoyed learning the magic of how to convert a darted pattern into a princess pattern. Um, again, I think everyone, if, if you're really into your sewing and you want to be able to take it to the next level, you need to learn pattern making. You learn some basic flat pattern making because it definitely it's it's not it's not rocket science. A lot of it's you can get pretty complicated, but a lot of it's pretty straightforward. Especially again, get yourself a good textbook, and it'll really take your design skills to whole new level. Learning how to to make things exactly how you want them. It just that's why we sew, right? So that we can get what we want. That's always important. So let's just see if I'm just going to wait a little bit, see if there's any questions. But again, think about this. The next time you have that, that piece of fabric, it's too narrow. Don't, don't worry. You can, you can do some adjusting. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad that it sounds like I've answered a lot of questions. And so, um, I hope you will, will go forth and, and practice this. Again, you can you can find these basic blocks um, online on those people at Etsy that sell them, sell collections of basic basic garment slopers and things. Um, so you know, support your local artists and uh, you can order them from, from a lot of people on there. So I don't want to name anyone in particular because there's several, but all right. So thank you so much for watching. My honor as always, I'm Katrina Walker and Thank you and goodbye from my studio and definitely go forward and so happy.